Hey, what's up everybody? So in this video, I just wanted to go over something that I see a lot. Uh, students are asking questions about it a lot in the forums and have been for quite some time now. So I just want to introduce some new concepts to you and uh, kind of resolve some things about this specific question. So it deals with the CDB function in the database. And basically, right now I have it commented out. So let me make this a little bit bigger. And then over here, I'm going to, where's my CDB? Okay, so it's commented out, I'm gonna uncomment it. And then when I go back and look here, it'll run here momentarily. So first and foremost, I'm getting a promise rejection, Mongo error. Let's see what that's all about. Unknown modifier push all. I must be using an older version of Mongoose or MongoDB. Uh, I have the newer version of MongoDB. Well, not the newest, I think they just came out with version four. But let me check package JSON. And mongoose 4.11.9, wow. So I'm gonna do an npm uninstall mongoose and then npm i-s mongoose and that should get me up to date with 5.2.1 I think is the newest version. So we'll just see what happens. Uh, where, 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 where is it? Well, now it's not installed yet. So once it's done installing, we'll know. Okay. So Mongoose 5.2.2. All right, they just came up with another version. All right, so if I run no daemon, it's going to give me some warnings. Uh, they've got some newer syntax. Yeah, so here's this, and this is what's getting logged out from the seed function. But before we deal with that, we'll go ahead and fix this business over here so in app.js it looks like I'm using the use mongo client true we're not we don't want to use that anymore for sure that's an old solution but there is a use parser URL something or other here it is use new URL parser so we're going to replace doo -doo 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 -doo, this use mongo client with the use new URL, new use new URL parser, set it to true. And now it's gonna restart. And it says database connection port must be specified. So I'm gonna go ahead and here on my local setup, I'm gonna specify 27017. Okay, so last time it's going to restart and it's a clean setup, the database has been connected. So it says it's removed the campgrounds, added three campgrounds, and then created three comments. Well, if you go back and look at seeds.js, you'll notice that we do remove the campground. Oh, this is this new um, <laughs> this new extension telling me to take a break. Um, anyway, I'm not gonna take a break right now, sorry. So anyway, back to my code. Um, campground.remove. That's the campgrounds being removed, so that's expected. Then we have this loop, data dot for each, that loops over this data right here, creates a campground for each one of those. But then inside the callback for each campground dot create, we have this callback here where we create a comment. So it really should be like remove campgrounds, create a campground, create a comment, create a campground, create a comment, and so on and so forth. And that's not how it's coming back. So. What I want to do first is clean up this, uh, what's called callback hell, or some call it like the Christmas tree of doom, or the pyramid of doom, or if you can come up with a creative name for it, I'd love to hear it in the uh, comments below. And so anyway, we want to clean it up, and there's another thing that I want to do that, I'm not sure why Colt didn't do this, but a lot of students, over the course of finishing the course and all the projects, they run out of space with their workspace. And that's because their database is so full of comments because you're not deleting any of these seeded comments. So every time you restart your server, you're getting new comments and then new comments on top of that and on top of that. And you end up with a ton of comments. So we'll do a comment.remove and then we'll just pass it an empty object and a function that takes an error. And then we'll handle that error like this. And we'll log and we'll say removed comments. Now, beneath that log, we'll take everything else and we'll move it up inside of this callback. And my spacing and formatting is all screwed up. But anyway, I'm going to save that and the server's going to restart. 
that she knows. And now it says removed comment, good. Removed campground is good, but then it does the same thing. Added a campground three times and then created a new comment three times. <sighs> Why is that happening? So it's just how async code works. Like there's the um, the analogy of having multiple people. Well, here's a simple one. You go up and you order something at like McDonald's and you order a burger and instead of you waiting there and blocking the rest of the customers, someone else can come up where you wait on the side and they can order a burger. And maybe they ordered a burger with fries but you ordered like 10 burgers. So your 10 burgers are gonna take longer than theirs to finish and get returned by the cashier or the cook. And so they get their food first even though they were there second. So that's kind of what's happening here is the campgrounds are getting created first and then the comments, even though some of the comments were created before some of the campgrounds in the loop, they're getting returned later. And it's just the way that the JavaScript event loop works. We're not going to go into it in too much detail. Uh, I can link to a really good article uh, in the description below that you should take you know, 15, 20 minutes and read it if you really want to understand the event loop. Uh, but what we will do here is offer up a pretty simple solution for this. So in the newest version of JavaScript, uh, in the newer versions and the newest uh, implementation of it, they have something called async await. And so async await is kind of a way, uh, to put it simply, it's a way to take asynchronous code and run it in kind of a synchronous manner. So that's what we really want to do here. Plus we want to get rid of all this like uh, callback hell stuff that's got we have going on. So I'm going to get rid of this comment down here and basically I'm going to get rid of all of that and all of that. So we'll start with comment.remove. This returns a callback, so I'm going to get rid of the callback and we'll just semicolon it right there. And so we will do, um, how are we going to do this? Comment.remove is going to be let. Uh, we don't have to let it because we're not getting anything back other than a potential error. So we'll say await comment.remove and that's it. We're just waiting for comment.remove to finish running and then we'll run the next thing in line. So we'll do an await campground.remove and again we'll get rid of uh, that callback. Now there's still going to be some lingering stuff down here, right? So we have these two I believe are coming from what we had there. Those were the closing uh, parentheses and curly brackets for both of these functions. And so if we're awaiting these, they're going to wait for one another to finish and then they're going to execute uh, the next one in line. Now we have this data dot for each seat. Well, first of all, data is a horrible name for this. If you have an array, you should call it something plural, right? So these are campgrounds. So we can call them campgrounds. Um, or since we're going to be using campgrounds somewhere else, we can call these seats. Whatever you call it, just call it plural. I know data can be implied that it's plural, but try to choose a word that has an S on the end of it. So we'll have seeds up here and put a little semicolon there. Not a big deal. It's not like it's going to break without it. It's just a personal thing. So then down here, instead of doing a data dot for each, we'll do a for uh, seed. So we'll do const seed of seeds. And so if you haven't seen a for of uh, iterator or for of loop, this is uh, also a new feature. So we're basically just saying for each seed inside of the seeds array, do something, okay? And so for each seed, we wanna do a campground.create. So we'll just copy this and that's it. We do wanna do something with the campground that gets returned though, right? We wanna create a comment and then we want that comment to um, be uh, added to the campground.comments array. So we will do a let campground is equal to await campground.create seed. And then we're going to create the comment. So the comment is created with the text. All the comments are the same, right? So we'll copy this and paste it in here. Comment.create. Here's the text and the author. And I'll just change these to single quotes. Not a big deal, it's just another personal preference. And so then we put the closing paren around this. And if you want, you could put it down here, doesn't really matter. Uh, but we need to do a let comment is equal to 
comment.create. And I, I foresee a possible issue with using the let that way inside of the uh, loop. We'll see if we run into it or not. So now that we have the comment, and sorry, I should have put the await keyword before comment.create. So now that we have the comment, we can do a campground dot comments dot push the comment and then we can do a campground dot save and that should be good so we're gonna get rid of everything we have here and basically what we end up with is a wait for the comments to get removed wait for the campgrounds to get removed it doesn't matter the order you can put campground first if you want and then we'll start looping over the seeds and for each seed and seeds these three then we're going to await the campground.create and we pass the seed in. And then when that's done running, the value that gets returned from that is the campground here. And then the same thing for the comment, the value that gets returned from comment.create is this comment. And then we take that comment, we push it to the campground, we save it, and then we loop to the next um, seed and seeds. So let's put some console logs in here to see what's going on. So we'll do console.log and we'll say campgrounds removed and then uh oh there we go we'll do comments removed and we'll do campground created and then we'll do comment created And lastly, we can do, oop, we'll say comment added to campground. All right, so let's save this and we'll go back to our code, wait for it to run, and it crashed. So this is good that it crashed because it's saying that await is only valid in an async function. And right here, the function that we're using Oh, hi, Kitty. <laughs> uh, the function that we're using is not an async function. So we'll just put the word async before function. And I think I have the order of that correctly. We'll know in a second. So that's going to run. Great. So the database was connected. This is something from app.js. And then it says campgrounds removed, comments removed, campground created, comment created, campground added to comp comment added to campground and then it repeats the same thing twice so the order is exactly how we expected it to be and also the syntax looks way nicer right and if you were to remove these console logs you can leave them in if you want to you just don't want them in there in production uh, but you could put comments in there I mean this is pretty um, I don't know you could call it verbose but descriptive code so it's kind of obvious what's going on here you don't necessarily have to comment it out but you could if you want to and uh, this is just a lot cleaner than what we had before. It's not the callback hell and it's being executed and uh, the values are being returned in the order that we would expect. So that is just a really brief intro into async await. I didn't really explain the inner workings of it. I'll link to a uh, more lengthy article in the description below that you should definitely take the time to uh, read into. Uh, async await uses promises. So if you don't know about promises, you should probably do a little bit of homework and read about those first. And also, if you're getting uh, more errors about the async uh, function or the keyword await, then that's probably because you aren't using the one of the later versions of Node. So if we do a Node-V, I'm using version 9.11.1. I think if you're using anything newer than version 8, then you'll be good. Uh, if you don't know how to do that, how to update your Node, then I'll link to a, uh, a video I have where I use MVM Node Version Manager to upgrade your version of Node. And just make sure you upgrade to uh, version 8 or newer, and this syntax will work for you. So that's it for this video, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks a lot. Oh, yeah, before you go, I forgot one thing. Uh, we need to handle errors in here. So in order to do that, we can just wrap everything in a try-catch block. So oop, there's an error. We'll catch it. So everything here can move up into the try block. So we're going to try each one of these, and if an error happens in any one of these, we'll catch it and we'll deal with it here. So we'll just console log the error. You could throw it or return it to next or whatever you want to do. 
but uh, right here I'm just gonna log it for simplicity's sake. But anyway, just make sure you have this try catch uh, syntax in here so you can handle any potential error messages. And now we're actually done. Okay, thanks.